Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we're going to be taking a look over here at the Bitcoin price chart to discuss what's been going on here with the price action for Bitcoin as we've been heading down. We'll also look over here at the XRP price chart, which we've been following for several weeks, doing a very similar accumulation schematic at the top of the range as it has in the past. Now, finally making its way back into those 46 cents levels that we've been talking about for weeks and we'll talk about the price action of ethereum over here i think covering these three assets today will kind of help us get an idea of where we are in the market what we're looking for next to kind of give us some further clues to speculate where this market could go first up is to take a look over here at bitcoin in my last few videos i've made my best speculative guess on what could happen with the price action of bitcoin as we can see over the last three weeks there's been three videos i've been discussing this in markets in the morning that i'm working on a lot of other things right now and I haven't given up on videos I've actually been recording tons of videos I just had to do time management here for a moment so I decided to go with continuing markets in the morning while I continue to work on my other things until that's done then back to videos we go but in these videos I've discussed what my prediction is for Bitcoin so we can take a look at my most recent video on April 5th and we can watch here at the 12 minute and 53 second mark so I'm going to make my best guess in here. I, I do think we are in some si some sort of a range that is like this, that there may be a stab to go take out that level. And it maybe convinces us, hey, we're actually in some type of a breakout that this does continue on here for at least, you know, probably the rest of April. That price behavior is what gives us some room to really just kind of work around in here for XRP for some time. But one thing to kind of take notice on that will like I'll point back to this video in the future if things start to even look closer to this, because if, if this is true, well, we're still just like halfway through the ranging process in here. But there was something very clear that did happen in here. And it's one of those things that still just kind of shows up all the time over there on Bitcoin. So I'll be keeping my eye out for it is that classic 702 Fibonacci retracement that comes in that we typically see quite often in the market that when a peak comes in then you see a 702 retracement then you go on and plunge down and that's the exact retracement we saw over there when elon musk went on saturday night live retail euphoria back at the 702 retracement then gets wrong-footed and that even in this phase back over here that we're pointing to right in here what ends up happening in here is that this is an ABC correction that actually emerged right in here with a 702 Fibonacci retracement. So right in here for Bitcoin, having to kind of be cautious a little bit of false breakouts that could happen here to the upside as it's ranging here in these prices. Then if we see a false breakout that eventually pulls back in here, it'll be all about watching a retracement come back in here to complete an ABC and then some time spent consolidating down in there. And I reiterated that over here on a tweet on April 10th when I was referring back to that talking about a short squeeze to come here in Bitcoin, a fall back down into maybe the 27s, 27,000 a retracement, then a fall. I reiterated that again this morning over here on Twitter saying, as Bitcoin has continued to play out, here is a more zoomed in detailed speculative guess. If this idea continues, I will narrow in on a more precise location for where I speculate the B wave will top out at once the A wave completes, which would be a 702 retracement of the A wave. Showing an example of an ABC correction in here in which you have your initial fall for your A wave, your B wave back to 702, then onwards to your C wave, and that this was what my best speculative guess of the market has been based on a short squeeze pulling out. I will say here, this held up much longer than I could have imagined it to stay up there. I think it stayed up for almost an entire week before finally it has fallen back down to these lows. So it definitely got confusing up here how long it stayed, but it does seem to still be in play. So as we look at Bitcoin currently right now, coming back off of this short squeeze, it has taken the entire thing back at this point. What we typically see in these scenarios for moves to complete their endings is eventually some type of support comes in here that looks awfully a lot, a lot like the bottom is actually already in. This is actually going to be your shorts closing. This is the exhaustion of the selling. And then finally, we have one more fall. And then the, usually we'll see a bullish divergence emerge down here in the relative strength. We can zoom out on bigger time frames to see, you know, we don't really have anything huge happening on bigger time frames. So you see it on the four hour slightly, but uh, not a whole lot in here, but maybe something more of a move up and then a move down, but not going down as low as that previous four. So still waiting on this time prediction, not really interested in time predicting that. 
Uh, but then the next thing to watch out for will be pulling back up in here for a B wave to then go on to C. And then as I've said on bigger time frames, I believe the trend will emerge once again, back to the upside again. So expecting that the bears will come flying in here, claiming victory as they always do. This is typically how retraces end up working. There's ultimate fear working your way all the way back up in these things. Bears will claim victory, then they will shut their traps again. Then the bears will claim victory, then shut their traps again until finally the bears do eventually capitulate. Once the news cycle has changed and prices have risen up, we will usually see the entire market switch into euphoria but so far this does seem to be in play so if we kind of look at bigger time frames we'll take these things off here and just kind of look at indicators in here you can see the bearish divergence that emerged right in here right so we've risen prices yet uh strength wise we're getting weaker let me see that on the 12 hour time frame we can see that over here just slightly over here on the daily time frame uh, but we definitely see the divergence down here and over there on the moving average convergence divergence MACD. So energy has cooled off in here, or at least strength has cooled off in here for Bitcoin at the time being. So if the grain perspective is something along the lines of this, do we see that happening over there for XRP? And I, I certainly do see that happening over here on XRP as well. When we had something like this happen back in 2020, I mean, this is a very simple structure of showing you how these things work. You end up getting your short squeeze that happens right in here. We fall back down and then we go back in for a 702 retracement of your B wave, right? B wave hits 702. Then we pull back down in here. And then you could see in here, we go from September 3rd all the way over here till late October. So we spent a few months in here, right? This whole time period, this is about 31 days right here. We're pretty close. What we're at 35. So spending a couple of months down here, right? So essentially saying, Hey, we're going to have a B wave that pulls back up. And then we go down here and then we settle for a couple of months that would align with what we're talking about over here for XRP as well. That, Hey, maybe some kind of support starts to show up in here in this 44 to 46 level prices shuffle their way back up as Bitcoin shuffles its way back up. Then we head back down. This is kind of the violent B wave or violent C wave there for Bitcoin. Then we just kind of trend sideways for a couple of months, heading slightly lower for XRP in there as Bitcoin's working out one of these things for about a month and a half. That would sound logical to me. Then what happens? Bitcoin goes back into the big retracement. XRP fires up with it as well. And it's just that kind of the exit liquidity happening there in the market. And so this is really kind of the thesis I'm playing with currently right now. And so far, it does seem to be playing along to that tune. So for XRP, it has not deviated from what we've talked about for the last several weeks. Still just partying along right in here. And it seems to be showing no signs that it's going to be breaking from that and doing something differently at this point. It has just played along perfectly to the tune. So the bigger question comes then, well, what happens over here with Ethereum? And that is whether Ethereum has to also go into Wyckoff accumulation down in here for a longer period of time or continue a breakout higher and then have its accumulation happening in here. For me to say which one I think is going to happen, I would say with this pullback in here, it's definitely, in my view, increased the odds that one of these was going to happen or is going to happen. But I think really we'll know the answer when Bitcoin heads back up. So if Bitcoin hits lower, then it comes back into this retracement. That should be the telltale of where the top of Ethereum is for the moment, whether that's way up in here or if it went back into a retracement. At whatever point in time this happens for Bitcoin, uh, that'll tell the story of where the kind of the peak for Ethereum is. Considering XRP has played along so well, I just, I, I don't see any scenario of it breaking from this. If it does, then, you know, we can address it then. But this just seems to be pretty crystal clear for XRP. The question is on if Ethereum is going to shift higher to consolidate at a higher price level or shift down into Wyckoff accumulation. Some examples of these types of moves to shift up and have a higher consolidation period would be like here for Bitcoin back in 2017. You can see it does break out, pulls back a little bit below the level, but then shifts up its way up here to eventually have the consolidation higher. This seems like the most logical to me. Also, Ethereum had this type of corrective structure, which we've shown several times here from back in 2016, moving into 2017, eventually gets the breakout, then has the consolidation at the higher level. Based on the structure that we've had, this makes the most sense to me too. But the thing to be mindful of that we've talked about before this pullback started when Ethereum was still sitting at 2100, at least in markets in the morning and over there in my newsletter, is to be mindful of these types of Wyckoff accumulations in which we can poke just above the top right in here, as Bitcoin did in 2015. Then we head right back in and then began 
the spring phase, the final phase of Wyckoff accumulation to happen in here. So a reason why this moment is so vivid to me and why I'm talking about it, if you know about, if you know anything about me, it, it's so rare that over here on Twitter, I'm willing to like put these types of things out here ahead of time. These types of like calls on what I think is the, you know, speculative guess as to what's going to happen here because Twitter is so insanely toxic. It does no benefit for me on Twitter. I'm usually just going to get a bunch of reply guys who say you're wrong. I usually only post these things if I have strong conviction on them. And because I've lived through these types of moments before, from when Bitcoin did this back in 2020, and that I believe we're in a similar phase of that right now, and that really this phase right here is kind of like our FTX collapse happening in the market. This is your C19 of 2020. We've worked our way out of here similarly here in 2022 and 2023, and that this phase was marked by a significant amount of wrong footing in the market. Afterwards, a bunch of anger happened in the market. Afterwards, a bunch of fear happened in the market. Most of market participants believed the market was going to go much lower. But this was an ABC correction, very clear ABC to a 702 retracement happening in here. And I do have the speculative guess that this is the phase of where we're at. And so if we get a move down like that, if XRP continues back to the lows, we know where the sentiment resides for XRP holders, right? Right up in here, this is the excitement and the euphoria. Right down here is the pessimism, the toxic, the anger, the frustrated, the worry, the depressed. These two levels, right? We know where the emotional boundaries are. And should we have something play out like this, you would expect prices would move down with it as it has been playing perfectly, signaling that it is going to, that there's going to be a ton of worry in the market. And then the question comes on Ethereum, right? So if Ethereum gives us that same thing, just kind of being prepared for it ahead of time. And I think really the answer for Ethereum for me to say, if I think we're going to do a Wyckoff spring versus continued breakout to happen, like we've seen for Ethereum before, like we've seen for Bitcoin before, all really stems back to what happens with the market as Bitcoin goes back into a retracement in here for another leg down. And one of the main reasons I'm making this too is just to be like, be prepared, be prepared, be prepared. Uh, it is going to be the entire emotional switch in the market. You've watched it over the last month, a lot more optimism returning back to the market. You've seen the $1 million in 90 days for Bitcoin stuff over the last month. You've seen people be real optimistic that XRP is going to go a whole lot higher. You've seen a lot of people optimistic that the case was going to wrap up by the end of March. We are almost at the end of April. Like I have said, I think 2023 will be a great year. Just not that we're quite there yet for that to happen and that there's going to be one more phase of tough times ahead. And I can tell from the number of likes, the comments, people do not want to hear this. You can just look at all the first comments here with us. Stop the fractal nonsense. It's ridiculous. You got to respect the pump. BCB, you said Bitcoin will make an ABC correction first, and now you're dreaming of a short squeeze. Okay. Good luck with waiting for 25K again. Ha ha, bear. Remember that time we followed a fractal for over six months and then it deviated? We're at that same point again, BCB. Good luck. Fractals are a good reference, but if it was that easy to copy and paste previous moves and foresee future markets wouldn't even exist. These are all the first comments on the reply here. You have 143,000 views, 757 likes. I know my ratios. That's very low. Posting this type of stuff. Definitely gets nowhere near the likes of the people who are saying this is a one, two, three, four, five, and we're going to break out and go to 70 cents. The ratioing happening there on those likes versus this, we are just seeing precise behavior. So should this come, just be prepared. The bears will return. The fear will return. The toxicity will return. It literally flipped to the opposite direction. And <laughs> their name, they're calling me the bear after spending all of 2022 and 2023 saying the bottom was already in. So this is just a sentiment check, a, a sentiment warning. There are things saying that the market's going to pull back. Unclear on whether Ethereum is going to get that push higher before it does as so. But zooming out on it, it all makes sense. What did we have happen here, right? We spent nine months underneath this resistance level. All we are saying here is an A, B, C, to backtest the breakout that happened to eventually go. It was support, it was resistance, it was resistance, it was resistance, it was a breakout, a backtest of support. That's all it is. Then onwards and upwards we go. But to just kind of get prepared, because if bears are going to take their victory lap, you're gonna see wrong footing, you're gonna see calls for manipulation of the market, you're gonna see lots of different stuff. But hey, this is all just part of the game. Otherwise, when it comes to the actual XRP price chart, we could look at this a little bit closer. You could see it's 
behaved pretty well. It actually, it bounced off really well off of that 41 cent level to then move up, but it even went all the way to the top and then started kind of deviating here. I'm not so certain this thing will continue play, playing out like this in regards to one, two, three, then done because we already went as high as it really needed to go there when it went to 48 cents or 58 cents and the fact that it really stalled out there for so long. So for me personally, the sooner we can get this over with, the better. I am a buyer down here in these prices and I am optimistic in 2023 to set this puppy sailing. But all right, that's what's going on in the market. It's the last video. I can't believe it. it's been April 5th. The last video talking about Bitcoin, you know, price prediction in there saying, hey, look, looking for a short squeeze to happen over here for Bitcoin. Then it'll pull back down for an A wave then heading into B and C. Since that last video, uh, we have seen the short squeeze that took Bitcoin up there above 30,000. Now back to 28,000. Now looking for a bottom to start trying to form itself in there and then head on into a B wave then likely heading on lower again. Uh, but that's just all part of the game to backtest a broken resistance level that was intact for nine months. So this is just part of the game. It's how things work. An update for videos, right? So we will start resuming videos again next week. They will continue to be spotty next week and the week after that as I will be going to Consensus 2023 in Austin, Texas and XRP Las Vegas in Las Vegas, Nevada. But they will be returning next week still spotty and then by the time we get to like the second week of may boom we'll be back into the swing of things we'll be getting videos all the time and you guys will be sick of my voice <laughs> some of you have probably missed it and i understand that right with a live stream i'm totally right there with a lot of you i even tweeted about it and said hey look i know these streams have been running really long sometimes they hit over two hours long i i cannot watch a two-hour live stream personally me blockchain backer i cannot watch a two-hour live stream i can't watch a one-hour live stream Lucky for if I can watch 30 minutes, just to, to squeeze that amount of time into my day, it's very difficult. So I totally sympathize with those who can't do it, even putting it on 2x speed or 1.5x speed to play it back really quick. It's hard to do that. So I, I totally get it. It's not for everybody. Totally understand. It's just been, there's been a lot going on behind the scenes on my end. And I had to kind of make a choice on how to manage my time. And so we're going to start working the videos back in. That is the heart of this YouTube channel. The heart of this YouTube channel is not live streams. The heart of this channel is videos. Videos will still be primary content of this channel. There's just a lot of things, a lot of moving parts happening in here until we can get things right back on track, which should be by the second week of May, where we're back in the full swing of things. So, all right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. I'm hope, I hope you've had a great week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I want to thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice, and I am not a financial advisor. But if you ever need a pick-me-up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.